Guys, we've hit the jackpot again. MediaTek's latest Dimensity 9500S platform was just released this afternoon, and guess what? I've got the very first phone with it right here in my hands. Can you believe it? Redmi Turbo 5 Max. The appearance and other specs are still under embargo, so I can't show you the back cover just yet. But today, as a little appetizer, let's take a first taste of the performance of this freshly launched Dimensity 9500S chip. As the second most powerful SoC in MediaTek's 9005 series, just behind the Dimensity 9500, the Dimensity 9500S this time uses their own second generation all big core architecture. It features a 1 plus 3 plus 4 CPU setup with an ultra large X925 core clocked at 3.73 GHz. Its performance surpasses even the previous flagship, the Dimensity 9400, and the cache size hasn't been reduced either. It's clear that this chip is directly targeting Qualcomm's Snap Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 of the same generation, aiming to compete with the Snapdragon 8 Ultra Edition. This is also the first time a standard flagship chip has been used in a mid-range device. The Redmi Turbo 5 Max is paired with LPDDR5X Ultra RAM and UFS4, one flash storage chip. For a mid-range performance phone priced around 2,500 Wen, there's really nothing to criticize about the hardware. Here, we'll use Geekbench 6 and 3 DMARC to benchmark its CPU and GPU. The scores are already impressive, even surpassing last generation's flagships in some aspects. To make the most of this so-c, the Redmi Turbo 5 Max has introduced a new performance scheduler in its turbo engine, which more precisely manages CPU and GPU resource allocation across different games and scenarios, ensuring smoothness and stable efficiency. Of course, just testing the Turbo 5 Max alone wouldn't be satisfying enough, so we've brought in similarly positioned devices, one with the Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3 and another with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with built-in fan cooling, for a real-world comparison to see which has the most potential to become the mid-range performance king in 2026. We'll start simple and great gradually ramp up, beginning with extreme graphics settings and 120 FPS ultra high frame rates as a warm up. The Turbo 5 Max maintains a perfect frame rate curve throughout, with an average power consumption of 3.6 watts, which is well controlled. The device temperature is just slightly above body temperature. The performance of the two Qualcomm devices is also quite similar. However, the Honor 5 Milli RT, which features active cooling, has a back surface temperature about 3 degrees lower, making it feel noticeably cooler. The OnePlus A6 T, on the other hand, shows slightly more minor fluctuations. Moving on to another intense round of Peacekeeper Elite, all three devices maintain nearly full frame rates, but the Redmi and Honor deliver smoother frame rates throughout the game, resulting in a better overall experience. Meanwhile, the OnePlus has four instances of stuttering. If you look closely at the frame rate curve, you can indeed spot several very subtle fluctuations, which makes it feel like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 is not quite as stable in this regard. After warming up, let's ramp up the pressure and switch things up with half an hour of Genshin Impact in Natlan. Here, the advantages of the Redmi Turbo 5 Max and Honor 5 milli RT become even more apparent. Especially the Redmi, which slightly outperforms in terms of frame rate, resolution, and power consumption. Keep in mind, the Honor's Snapdragon 8 Supreme is a true previous generation flagship chip, and with its Deco module's external-like active cooling, the Redmi Turbo 5 Max still manages to edge it out. This already reflects the caliber of the Dimensity 9000 S chip. Aside from having a slightly higher frame rate, the OnePlus A6T struggles a bit when it comes to stability, power consumption, and heat generation. This is probably related to the inherent performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and also has something to do with OnePlus's performance release strategy. Raising the pressure another notch, let's look at Zenless Zone Zero, which is quite demanding on the CPU. After half an hour, the Turbo 5 Max achieves an average frame rate of over 58 FPS at 886p rendering resolution. Judging from the graph, aside from the inevitable frame drops during combat and scene transitions, there isn't much stuttering during gameplay. Honor also performs well in terms of frame rate and temperature control, with even less stutter, but its resolution is only 733p, sacrificing image sharpness for smoother performance is just a different scheduling approach. By comparison, OnePlus is a bit too conservative here. Finally, during the half-hour golden hour of Star Rail at maximum load, running around the map, teleporting and fighting monsters, perhaps thanks to the support of active cooling, Honor's power consumption is slightly higher, but its rendering frame rate is naturally more stable. Redmi continues its earlier high-resolution rendering approach, with the 997P outputting an average frame rate close to 59 FPS, recording only 
eight instances of significant stutter. Most of these stutters were simply unavoidable frame drops during teleportation and scene transitions. Unrelated to performance, the power consumption was only 6 watts, which is 1.4 watts lower. Without the benefit of active cooling, achieving this level of output at similarly low temperatures and power consumption is already quite impressive for the Turbo 5 Max. In comparison, OnePlus's performance release seems a bit conservative. Not many major stutters, but quite a few minor ones. Okay, after comprehensive testing, the Redmi Turbo 5 Max stands out as a performance flagship in the recent 2,500 Wen price range, pushing performance to the limit. The newly launched Dimensity 9000S chip is clearly designed to compete directly with the neighboring Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 leading edition, and in actual comparisons, the results are indeed impressive. The Redmi Turbo 5 Max easily outperforms the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and more importantly, it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 leading edition. I'll make a bold prediction. This chip is very likely to be a game-changer in the performance segment for the first half of this year. So, if you love playing mobile games but are on a budget, you might want to keep an eye on it. There could be more surprises at the launch event. Finally, if this video helped you understand the performance of the Redmi Turbo 5 Max and its Dimensity 9000S chip, feel free to follow, like, save, and share. This is YLab, I'm Xiaoran. See you in the next episode.